Hey guys, I'm Jared. I'm Ben. And we just saw Blade Runner 2049. 2049! <laughs> yes! But I haven't seen the other 48. Will I, will I know what's going on? <laughs> If this is your first time here and you want to know a little bit more about movies, make sure you hit that subscribe button and hit the bell notification so you don't miss anything here at Movie Nerds. So we can't really say too much about Blade Runner 2049 because anything that we say would be considered a spoiler, I think. Our very presence here is a spoiler. Yeah, we're, this is all classified. Hmm. Um, but what we can say is that Blade Runner 2049 follows uh, Officer K, who's played by Ryan Gosling, as he is hunting down replicants like every other Blade Runner before him. And in the course of his job, he uncovers a conspiracy that could threaten to take down society as they know it. As they know it. As know they it. Know, know, it. It. know it. I want to ask you some questions. What happened? I covered my tracks. Scramble the records. We were being hunted. By who? What do you think, Ben? Uh, okay, everyone's heard <laughs> things about this film. You've heard things, you've heard whisperings. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna bring out the word masterpiece. Yeah. Uh, uh, who knows if it's a masterpiece? It's not to me. It's not to me to decide. But once I say that word, then that's you know, all that if people someone, are gonna hear. If someone doesn't think it's a masterpiece, then they're gonna come back and they're gonna take me down. Yeah. I'm just gonna say it's a solid, solid sequel. Yeah. Uh, one of the better sequels I, in recent memory that I can think of. And it feels like the first film, but it feels different. It adds to the kind of story, yeah. builds on that initial story. Yeah. Um, Denis Veneuve puts his stamp on it. You know, it's, it references Ridley, but it feels fresh. I don't know, I, I was just, I was very impressed with this film. It's, it's you know, I should, have, I should have had the utmost faith that Denis could pull it off, you know, after Sicario yeah. and Arrival. Um, yeah, I, I honestly, like, I think this is up there with one of the best films of the year for me. What did you think? There's a lot to unpack in this movie, and by a lot, I mean it's a very long movie. Uh, I wasn't quite prepared for the, it's about probably two hours and 45 minutes. Yeah, it's, push, it's pushing three hours. It's, yeah. it's definitely like a, a movie of our times, you know, like, yeah. we pack so much into these films now. But the difference, I think, with this one is it doesn't feel bloated. Like, no. It is long, but it doesn't feel bloated. It's well, not... Yeah, the difference is that it, it feels deliberate rather than just cramming in stuff for the sake of cramming in stuff. Like, they could have edited stuff down, but it wouldn't... As, it wouldn't the, the pacing would be off. This is a very, very deliberate movie. The pacing is very, is very deliberate. You yeah. Know? And that, as the first film, you know, there was, yeah. there was long sections of that first film where, um, you know, characters were just sitting there contemplating what was going on. There was Van Gelis' music playing in the background. This is very similar. So the difference here is you've got an ominous drone from uh, Mr. Hans Zimmer and contributions from uh, another composer and perhaps even leftovers from uh, the first composer, yeah. Johan Johansson, yeah. who was booted off this film. Well, not booted, you know. Yeah. Him and Denis are friends. But well, you can hear him all over the trailers, but... Yeah. So they've used him in some respects, but yeah. Zimmer yeah. is all over this from basically yeah. the first frame. Which isn't to say it's a bad score. Like, no. this is... If you were worried that it wasn't going to, you know... Van Gelis's score for the first film is, you know... That, that, that's a piece of, like... Yeah, it's timeless. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it's not quite that, but it references that score a little bit. Yeah. Um, it's well, definitely... While also shaking you to your very core. Yeah. This is a fucking loud movie. The, the, the roof was actually... I don't know if the I, roof was going like, to give way at yeah, one point I during the screening. Yeah, I felt it. It was, it was shaking a bit. So, Baby Goss in the lead role. <laughs> Baby Goss. Uh, Baby Goss has grown up now. Baby yeah. Goss can fly. Uh, he, he's, he, I mean, we all knew he was a good actor, but yeah. he, he has, it's a really tough role that he has to play in this film. It's a lot of long takes, so he has to hold your attention for a long time, uh, and he does that completely. Yeah. Um, there's there's a lot of scenes in this film where you just want to you know feed him cereal like that, <laughs> that YouTube YouTube. There's that many there's that many takes. I, I feel like someone's gonna do that at the moment. Oh yeah, home video for sure. Um, but he does really well. Yeah, I don't think it's a spoiler to say that Harrison Ford is back. He's in all of the trailers. Yeah, uh, and he was really good. Yeah, I don't think it's the Oscar-worthy performance that some effusive reviewers have given him credit for, but it's a solid effort, and he he takes the Deckard character to a new place that we haven't quite seen before. So uh, it's a ni it's a nice change of pace for Harrison. Yeah, um, he's got a great it's a great build-up to to meeting Deckard for the first time. Yeah, the, the whole you can feel like you know 
the audience is kind of waiting for it and it doesn't disappoint when they do no. reveal him. So Jared, the important question yep. that everyone wants to know is, yep. will Roger Deakins win an Oscar for this film? He fucking better because this movie looks amazing. The color scapes, the way that he set the frame up, it's just spot on, all of it. And I think that's part of what draws you into the movie for so long. Like, if he didn't, if he didn't set these shots up so beautifully, you wouldn't be there for the whole, whole time, I don't think. Yeah, this is one of those movies, like most of Deacons' uh, jobs that he's done cinematography on. You could just pause it at any moment and it would just be like a painting. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, and, you know, so, sometimes I think that people don't understand exactly what cinematography is, you know. Uh, a certain level of, um, you've got to give credit to, like, whoever grades the film, the colour grade. But this is more than just a colour grade. Like, there's yeah. some insane lighting in this movie yeah. um, that all comes from just the crazy mind of, of Roger Deakins. So I think him and uh, Mr. Villeneuve paired together equals... It's just, it's magic. Mm. It's very special, very special indeed. So I think it's pretty obvious we really dug this movie. Uh, it's a long one, so be prepared for that, but it's more than worth the wait. 35 years in the making, and they knocked it out of the park. Anything else? Go see it in the biggest cinema possible. Yes. I, I always say this shit, but just can you just, can you just do it for me? <laughs> just do it for me. As usual, hit the subscribe button if you want to see more from us. And until next time, I'm Jared. I'm Bet. <sighs> Fucking replicants. <laughs>